Hi, uh, this is Brian Steyer again, and uh, hopefully we're working out some of these kinks. Um, again, this is the third installment in uh, the Chaplain uh, Strategic Leadership Series, and um, I'm reading, continuing reading O.S. Hillman's Change Agent, Engaging Your Passion to Be the One Who Makes a Difference. Uh, chapter two is called King Kong in the Garden of Eden, and um, Hillman draws a strange parallel to the Garden of Eden and the movie King Kong. Many of you are familiar with that. Uh, as he describes, imagine a living in a world without sin, a world where God is your intimate friend. You can speak to him at any time. You know that he loves you and he keeps you safe. He invites you to know him and you know he is dangerous, but you also know that he's very good. Your initial perception is fear. However, you discover that you are totally safe in this protected environment of the garden. All of your needs are met for companionship, love, food, and everything is provided. Without sweat and toil. The Bible says that the Garden of Eden is where Adam and Eve lived it was a perfect kind of life before the fall. The point is... Adam and Eve were designated as co-regents over a perfect paradise. Hillman cites an introduction to the Old Testament template by Landa Cope. Cope gives an authoritative leadership title for to God. And those are King of Kings, the Lord of Justice, Jehovah Jireh, which uh, the Germans actually introduced the J. There is no J in the original Hebrew, by the way. Um, Lord of the economics. Father, who is Lord of the family. Creator God, Lord of science and technology. Living Word, Lord of communication. Potter, Lord of arts and beauty. Great teacher, Lord of education. He is also the great physician and the healer of our bodies. Some Christians falsely assume that their sole purpose is to attain salvation. Then what? The church in general perception is that we can check that box because they are assured of eternal life. But what about the time in between birth and death? Hillman explains, his mission wasn't simply for man to receive salvation. Salvation was only the entry point. His ultimate goal for was, was for man to rule by his grace, love, and power in order to be a testimony of his love to the world he, that he created, the world that he created. Hillman has, gay, has Gabe Lyon's book, The Next Christian, seven ways you can live the gospel and restore the world even further. He explains even further, I said. Christ's death and resurrection were not only meant to save people from something. We just think that we're saved from something. Like, oh, that bear that's running towards us. Or, oh, that lion. Mm -mm. He wanted to save Christians to something. God longs to restore his image in them, inside of them, and let them loose, freeing them to pursue his original dreams for the entire world. Here, now, today, tomorrow, they no longer feel bound to wait for heaven or to spend all their time telling people what they should believe. Instead, they are participating with God in his restoration project for the whole world. They recognize that Christ's redemptive work is not the end or even the goal of our stories. Redemption is the beginning of our participation in God's work of restoration in our lives and in the world. Understanding that one idea literally changes everything. That's the second installment. I pray that you ponder it. I pray that tonight before you lay your head on the pillow that you pray to God that you, you would understand 
that he has so much more for, for you. But you have to first meet him right where you are, bend your knee, pray that you would that he, he gives you that great that understanding that you have a heart that turns from your wicked ways and and seeks after him with all of your heart that you might know him better. Good night and shalom. Peace to you.